If you like this video, please press the subscribe button to subscribe to this channel and also give it a thumbs up. You can also support this channel with a donation by using the link in the description. This is where we really start diving into the theoretical meat of this discussion. Here we show exactly how this concept unifies quantum mechanics and general relativity. We eliminate the three infinities seen in general relativity with a non-quantum approach. This is where we start putting the pieces together. This is where we start solving the problems that occur for general relativity on quantum scales. This is where we start actually unifying the otherwise ununifiable. Understanding the basic concept of gravity under general relativity is quite simple. It is considered to be equivalent on the small scale to an acceleration. This is Einstein's field equation for general relativity. It is a equation of tensors, and the one that we are interested in is the metric tensor. Feel free to pause the video before we take a closer look. This is the metric tensor for a gravitational field. It is known as the Schwarzschild metric. And Rs is the Schwarzschild radius, which is the radius of the event horizon of a black hole. This metric reduces to the following equations, where ds is the distance in space-time, d tau is the proper time, dt is the time of an outside observer, and r is the radius from the center of gravitational attraction. This results in these two relationships between observed time and proper time, and observed length and proper length. These formulas result in these two angular relationships, allowing us to graph the curvature of space-time. This graph shows the curvature of the spatial component while approaching a black hole, event horizon. Note that at the event horizon is completely vertical. Here we have a 2D illustration of a gravitational field under general relativity. It shows the curvature of space that occurs. Note how it also reaches the vertical. To help your understanding, here is an illustration using ball bearings that illustrates this effect. Here is an illustration of gravity under general relativity with regards to the Earth, Moon system, and the Sun. It illustrates the curvature of space-time and the motion of the Moon, Earth, and Earth through it. Here is an illustration of the curvature of space-time in a gravitational field. The white lines illustrate the curvature of space, and the red lines illustrate the curvature of time. Note that the time dimension is 45 degrees at the event horizon, making it equivalent to moving at the speed of light. Here is an illustration showing how the light cones are tilted in the gravitational field. Note that the event horizon it is tilted such that the outgoing light is completely vertical, meaning that it will never get beyond the event horizon. Meanwhile, the inner light cone goes right into the event horizon. This shows that this is a more accurate depiction of the spatial coordinates within a gravitational field. It is actually moving towards the center with time. This provides a sufficient understanding of general relativity to get what is going on. It will make it possible to understand the rest of the video. Each space-time unit and its respective light cone tilts in accordance with general relativity based on its radius from the center. In reality, it's closer than this, but it shows the point. Each of these quantum-sized units are flat. The curve has links in a chain rather than the smooth curve usually depicted. This effect is too small to be noticed on macroscopic scales. One of the results of this process is that the event horizon is always full quantum lengths in radius. One of the consequences of this is that the infinities of time and space at the event horizon disappear. One quantum length is outside the event horizon, the next one is inside the event horizon. The various quantum fields that make up reality can only fluctuate in quantum length units. To form a complete wave requires a minimum of two quantum lengths. This means that the smallest possible wavelength is two quantum lengths. 
This limits the smallest amount of space that quantum fields can fluctuate in to one quantum length. At a full quantum length, you can have a standing wave. As a result, the smallest the center of a black hole can be is one quantum length in diameter. As a result, this eliminates the possibility of a singularity. This means that its volume can be as small as a quantum volume, that's quantum lengths cubed, but it is still a finite volume. The result is no infinite density and no singularity. One of the consequences is that you can no longer extrapolate the expansion of the universe back to a singularity. The reason is that you eventually reach the level of quantum units that places finite limits on where the extrapolation will take you. You can still extrapolate the expansion to the point where the visible universe is quite small, dense, and hot, but these figures have finite values. There are three main limiting factors, quantum temperature, where T0 equals 3.551351 times 10 to the 32 Kelvin, quantum density at 8.2044 times 10 to the 95 grams per cubic meter, and the smallest quantum wavelength of two quantum lengths equal to 8.1027 times 10 to the negative 35 meters. The mass of the ordinary matter in the observable universe is about 1.5 times 10 to the 53 kilograms. The mass of the observable universe with dark matter is 9.75 times 10 to the 53 kilograms. The mass of the observable universe with dark matter and dark energy is 3.75 times 10 to the 54 kilograms. This results in a minimum volume of the universe with just ordinary matter of 1.83 times 10 to the negative 43 meters cubed. The minimum volume with dark matter is 1.19 times 10 to the negative 42 meters cubed. And the minimum volume with dark matter and dark energy is 4.57 times 10 to the 42 meters cubed. This results in a minimum radius for the universe with just ordinary matter of 3.52 times 10 to the minus 15 meters. The minimum radius with dark matter is 6.57 times 10 to the negative 15 meters. The minimum radius with dark matter and dark energy would be 1.03 times 10 to the minus 14 meters. The radius of an atomic nucleus ranges from 10 to the minus 15 meters to 10 to the minus 14 meters, placing these within the range of an atomic nucleus. This is small but still finite, resulting in no infinities or singularities. It is important to note that this does not mean the universe started out this small. This is just the smallest it could have possibly been. Putting all of this together, we have quantized space-time, where space and time consist of discrete units, especially in general relativity, which determines the shape of space-time, and quantum mechanics, which determines what occupies that space. The most noticeable result of this arrangement is the elimination of the infinities from general relativity. This eliminates the places where the theory can break down. Quantum fields become groups of numerical values at discrete locations in space-time. These quantum fields provide the basis for all matter and energy. It results in everything being calculated either by a controlling program or controlling mind, or possibly both. We demonstrate here a full unification of general relativity and quantum mechanics. Along with special relativity as part of the picture, it provides a complete picture of our reality. It shows it to be a mathematical information-based reality. Here are our upcoming topics. Quantum gravity, what this says about reality, unifying natural and supernatural, fine-tuning this theory, predictions, how this can be falsified, why this requires God, the biblical connection, is time travel possible?